Hi guys, you are welcome to my channel. Okay, now this particular exercise is the last exercise for our conveyor counter design. We started them um, the previous times. Okay, this is the complete of the design. You know, we just finished. Let me show you in case if you are coming for the first time. This is where we started. Okay. This is the logic we are told to design for our first network and this is the second network we designed this and uh, we write this and they simulated it on our automation software so this is the logic so what we are going to do now is to convert this program this uh, PSC program to a schematic control so how do we do about this so let me take it this other way so that i can now reconcile there too Remember that the narrative said, let me see if I have the narrative. Okay, narrative said that when process is activated, conveyor get energized and the last. That is instruction for network one. So this network one is going to be here in our logic one. Here is logic one. Okay, in our automation, we'll call it network one. Here is going to be logic one. We have different logic here. So this is our lashing logic here. This circuit is our lashing logic. Okay. So now, um, all right. Now, network one here will represent our circuit logic one here. Okay. The instructions say when process is activated, conveyor get energized and the lashed. So let's come for our lashing circuit. Here is our lashing circuit. All right. I have my fuse. I have my overload contact. I have my stop button and I have my start button. I now activate my relay. My relay arrow one will lash here. So that's the meaning of here saying it should lash. Hmm? So drop this. Okay, and that is this one. The whole of this, if we are converting the whole of this, the whole of this, our network one from our uh, program logic, if we are converting this to schematic. Is going to take care of this logic here one here and also this conveyor remember that in the case of our uh, program we energize the conveyor through the bit auxiliary of my memory bit like this one and also interface a counter so that the counter can shut this one off so when you come to this logic what we have done here is this this logic like i told you you have seen it there so this is our conveyor. We now interface our conveyor with arrow one, arrow two. The reason for arrow one, arrow two is that instead of using this counter for this control here, yeah, there's a counter bit here that we shut this one down. Now, here now, this is the counter. Now, we don't feed counter because this is um, a different voltage counter. We don't feed counter directly to a conveyor. A contactor because this conveyor is a contactor so we don't want to feed this conveyor direct because this conveyor contactor may be using 230 volts ac and this one is giving us 12 volts or 24 volts as case may be so in that case we are using the counter to activate a relay a relay is going to now activate our contactor that is our conveyor so we didn't feed our conveyor directly from counter just like we did here. So what we did was to activate a relay. So in that case, this arrow two being the relay is now acting as our counter interrupter. Remember that in the case of this area, we use this counter to interface, to control this uh, uh, conveyor. So when the counting of this one elapsed, you should now cut off this uh, flow of signal for this one to get it disengaged de de uh, de energized so because of that now what we use in the case of schematic what you now did was to feed a relay through the output of the counter to feed a relay now relay will now come to interface on in and offing our counter our conveyor you now see that the logic is exactly the same it's just a little change if you understand logic okay all right so this network here this logic and this logic take care of this network one i repeat this logic here and this other lashing logic is now taking care of our network one 
Now, network 2 here for our counter and our sensor is now here. Um, yeah, keep it here. It's now this particular logic here. It's the same way. Okay, so this one is our counter logic. The counter logic is responsible for counting. This is the sensor that counts. All right, this is the sensor that counts to count the number of items passing, then to register here. When this one counts it and the number is completed, okay, when the number is completed, this relay here is going to be activating this to shut down. And once it shut down, the same relay here, this particular one, will also energize a counter. Remember that in the case of this network, when the counter network gets deactivated, two things will happen. Conveyor will be deactivated and uh, a counter will be activated. Sorry, a timer will be activated. So similarly, when this place is disabled, when this output is disabled, here will be deactivated and here will be activated. So this arrow 2 does two functions. Arrow 2 here to activate this counter. Arrow 2 here to deactivate this conveyor. Sorry, arrow 2 to activate timer. And arrow 2 here to deactivate conveyor. So arrow 2, arrow 2 is an integral part of this coil, this relay. All right. Now, when that uh, sequence is completed, then timer will come again. This timer will be energized. Upon the completion of the preset time, it will now come to activate a relay here. Look at the counter. Look at the timer. This timer will activate this. The counter, the contact of this timer is this. When the time elapses, when the counting preset time is completed, it's going to activate the relay here. And this relay will now reset. Look at the, the contact of this relay. It's going to reset this counter, just like this other logic did, to reset it by loading the value again. When that is done, this other sensor start loading, counting again, counting again, and registering the counting here again. Okay, so the same process. If I want to also reset this counter, I will use this reset bit to reset it. The same way I have a reset bit here. The same way I have my reset bit here. Okay, so if you understand the logic, it's similarly the same. It's exactly the same. So we are going to convert. I have done it already. We just converted um this logic to a schematic so this logic that i have here is exactly what i have it's exactly what i have here all right then these are the pilot lamp to also indicate whichever operation that is being activated here this one will now illustrate it so let's simulate it now all right so let's put on simulation once simulation is ready, this one is going to be loaded. If you watch the previous program on the PLC uh, logic, the same way, once we activate the program, we are going to load it. But this one is going to load automatically. Look at it coming up because it's loaded already. Waiting for sensor to start counting and waiting for the logic to be initiated. Okay. Once you put on simulation, I repeat again, this counter will be ready for the operation to commence so that this logic will come up once this logic is in is activated then this one is ever ready then for the counter for the sensor to start counting once it's counting you'll be registering here once it's counting is re registering here when the time elapses this one will come up and this one will get in a de-energized once this one get de-energized the timer will be energized and start counting when the time elapses the counter will be resected again for this sensor to continue counting another set of dozen products. So let's go. Let me initiate this now. I put on the process. Okay. Once that is done, conveyor will come up. Look at conveyor. And the indicator for conveyor is on. 
So I will start counting. Let me start counting product here. You will see the number here will be reflecting. So I count one, two, three, four, five. That is the set. Because we inputted a five number to make one set. When that is done, this one will get activated like I told you. After counting, the, the sequence will repeat again. You now see how this display come again to reset the counter. Let me count again. Yes, this one is now counter. This one is activated. This one is deactivated. Conveyor deactivated, a counter activated. When the time elapses, this one will get reset. And this counter start counting again. This uh, sensor start counting again. So the process is exactly the same. All right? Then along the line, when the system um, during the friction or resistance from mechanical of the mechanical uh, mechanism of the conveyor, if there's a restriction of friction or resistance within the mechanical component of the conveyor, they're going to be overload here. Yeah, look at overload with trip. Okay, this is the overload. This is the overload block. This one is going to trip. Once it trip, there's going to be alarm. This alarm coming up. This alarm. Then here we go through. And here we disable to shut down the entire system. Now to reset the fault, you reset from the overload again. Then the system will get reset. There is after troubleshooting. Then you can now start the project uh, process by activating the logic again. All right? So it's exactly the same process of the PLC. You can now see that if you understand the operation sequence of any program, it can convert any diagram. It can convert this one to a schematic. It can also convert schematic back to um, PLC logic. All right. The most important thing is for you to understand operation sequence of every given design. Okay. Once you understand that, once that is done, you can now write a program for more efficiency operation and download to PLC to control that particular process um, operation. All right. Then advantage of this again for you to understand this is because most of the system as well, they have not done what we call industrial revolution. Industrial revolution is the process in which you do away with your old method of operation and your old devices that are existing and they replace them with new invented uh, devices and the new invented uh, uh, equipment. Okay, so some of the industry, they have not done, they have not changed from control system method of controlling process to PRC method. So because of that, you're going to face a lot of challenges if you don't understand control system. Yeah, like I said before too, control system and PLC, they are exactly the same. One is of contemporary and one is a conventional. Conventional is this, the contemporary is this. This is the reigning method. This is the more efficient way of controlling a process using PLC, like the most efficient and the more advanced method of controlling process. But you cannot also control a process without a control panel. You must have a centralized control panel where field instrument will interface with PLC. Okay. PLC is an electronics device for communication and for controlling a process. Now, how do we now feed our field devices? The connection between field devices to control panel is by way of introducing a control panel, a central control panel, where the connection of your contactor, relays, motors, and all whatnot of field equipment will be terminated. Then controlling those few devices with a PLC is now sending a control signal from that panel to PLC with a control cable. All right. So you must understand your control before PLC. Otherwise, after writing the code, 
a different engineer will take over the termination of your job. In that case, the job, the money that is meant for you will be divided and divert, some of them will be diverted to field engineer that does the termination of your control panel and your PLC termination. So you end up writing program only and you will not implement program on connection aspect of it. But if you understand process of schematic, you can easily write a program and also carry out your connection, your termination process. Your termination exercise is where your experience will be more utilized. I repeat, connecting your process to a PLC and PLC to panel, central panels and your few devices, that is where your experience will be more, you'd be more useful. You're going to be utilizing your, your skill on that direction mostly. Writing program, anybody can write program. You can also call international personnel to write a program for you to control a particular process and you send money to the person, the person write the program and send to you. You download it to PLC and do your and do your connection and do your process commissioning and take over the operation of uh, uh, control. Let me repeat again. If I want to set up a bottle water factory, we have specialized programmers that does writing of code perfectly. You can consult them and tell them what you, the process you want to introduce, you want to um, um, install, you want to inherit, you want to project, you want to commence, and give them every bit of details about the project. They will write a code and send to you on bargain. You pay them for writing the code. So now you as an automation engineer, you don't have the time to write a complex coding, but you know the operation sequence of the coding. So someone else will send it to you, you pay the person, then you take it off from there and use that program, edit that program the way you want, edit it to suit your compatibility with your project. Then you now download it to your PLC and start a, uh, connecting the transmission, your communication cables from your PLC to your central panels, from your panel to your few devices. So you take over the job from there. Okay, so writing code is not the most essential part of automation. The most essential part of automation is connectivity between your PLC to your panels, from panels to your few devices. All right. Okay. Thank you. Share this and comment and like. All right. For more update information, to come to your doorstep on the subsequent exercise produced. All right. Thank you. Goodbye. See you next time.